thanks to our latitude and unique coastline, which provides plenty of breeding grounds, we've got one of the biggest populations of seals in Europe. 50,000 common seals and 120,000 greys. Now, that's as good a motive as you can get for great whites to visit our shores. And some people believe they've seen the evidence for this firsthand. On a July morning in 1999, Kayak enthusiast Ronnie Weir joined good friend Stuart Wilkinson and his family for a day at sea off the west coast of Scotland. It was really just a short paddle, nothing adventurous, just a lazy day in the Sea of Hebrides, which is a very popular kayaking area. Loads of people come from all over the UK to paddle here because there's so much wildlife and the scenery is so fantastic as well. At this time of year, common seal pupping season it was at its height up here. Ronnie and I have spent a lot of time studying the seals in these islands. From an amateur viewpoint, obviously, we're, we're, we're interested in wildlife. And uh, we'd, we'd gone for a tour around the islands, looking at seals and seal pups. As the group made their way toward an island, which they knew to be inhabited by a large group of common seals, they started to get the feeling that something wasn't quite right. We couldn't understand why the seals wouldn't come off the rocks. That was really strange, because normally when we approach them, they come off the rocks into the water. We paddled very close to them, and they just stayed there. They wouldn't move. Unable to explain the strange behaviour of the seals, they decided to make their way back to shore. It was then that Stuart's son spotted something in the water. He says, is that a dolphin, Dad? I knew instantly it wasn't a dolphin and it certainly wasn't a Baskin shark. Now, it was only about 50 yards away. I did make the remark that this probably wasn't the best time to go swimming if one of us came out of our boats. With that in mind, Stuart's girlfriend and son decided they'd rather be back on dry land, but Ron and Stuart chose to go back and investigate. So we took the other two back in and came back out, and it appeared again as though it had been waiting for us. And we moved up the coast, and this thing kind of followed us up the coast. Probably staying about 50 yards. I don't think it got any closer to us than that. And we went all the way down, past all the islands, turned and came back, and it followed us the whole way back up. But that wasn't all. The following day, Stuart and his son found something even more intriguing. I came across a seal carcass that had been bitten in two. There was no signs of decomposition or anything like that, so it was still pretty fresh, which I thought was more than a coincidence given what we'd seen the day before. In 2002, a lobster fisherman had an encounter he'll never forget. My name's Brian Bright. I've been fishing since I was eight years. They're called lobster pots, but they will catch crabs, spider crabs, velvet crabs, anything really that go in them. It is quite physically demanding. It's, it's a hard life that you might owe 500 pots today, another 500 tomorrow, and you could do three to 400 a day after. One summer's day, as Brian was heading towards his regular fishing spot, he wasn't aware of anything out of the ordinary. I left port about 7.30, went out and picked up my first pots about half past eight, started steaming towards the islands, and I see this big thing breach out of the water. He looked like he was tail towards me and head away, but I could actually see his back, and as he come up, he sort of twisted sideways, and sort of arced over, and then a big splash. I thought, what the was that, if you know what I mean? It was quite a, a, quite a size of thing to actually come leaping right out of the water, and actually come right out of the water. 
judging by the distance it was away from me and the size that it was, I would have estimated it to be anything from 15 to 18 feet long. When I actually approached where it was, there was all this blood and everything in the water, which sort of alarmed me. There was quite a lot of blood, and what I thought was a piece of seal. If I had had a sharp boat hook, I could have probably gaffed it. But I thought, well, I don't want to be the first Cornishman to have his arm bitten off by anything which is eating seals. If he's capable of eating a seal, he is capable of taking my arm off. I didn't think if I come home and told anybody that they would believe me. So I actually kept my mouth shut for about three weeks. But I know what I've seen, and it wasn't no dolphin and it wasn't no porpoise. In the summer of 2003, a group of divers had an unnerving encounter they would never forget. We were just at the beginning of a weekend's diving in Olapool. It was at the beginning of July, I think, and um, hot, sunny day, so we were keen to get in the water. Because the sea was quite calm, we decided that we'd head out to the Summer Isles, because that's where we all prefer to dive if we can. And there's a dive that we'd done before, Black Rock, which we just thought we'd have another dive on. They dived for about 40 minutes and photographed some of the diverse marine life in the area. It was a, a nice dive, we had a good time. But they had no inkling of what was about to happen next. My wife and I sort of finished our dive, and the other two guys were getting kitted up, and the boat was sort of just drifting along and under no power. And uh, some distance, Behind the boat, we saw a shark fin. At the time, we thought that it was a basking shark. And since the guys were already in their diving gear, they felt that they wanted to go and have um, a wee dive with it if they could. And uh, as soon as I started the engine, the shark turned. And instead of us approaching it, it came rather aggressively towards the boat. I seen basking sharks several times before, and this was a behaviour I'd never encountered, such a sort of an aggressive turn and, and movement. The shark approached and swam alongside the boat, very much giving us the, the once over, and uh, swam alongside for about 15 seconds before slowly diving underneath and swimming away. I'm a marine biologist professionally. Um, I spend a lot of time at sea and have seen a, a large variety of different wildlife. This was absolutely, definitely not a basking shark. The coloration was, was totally different. Light gray on the surface with very pale marking below the sort of midline. There was also no sign of the, the, the large gill slits that are very obvious in a, in a basking shark. I've never seen anything like this before. A large pointed snout. Small eyes to the side. Large triangular fin. And the size of the shark, a good five meters. I was convinced in my own mind that this was a great white shark. I could think of nothing else that it could be. 